everyone. This is Brittany Bond, and welcome back to the podcast. Today, I'm going to try a new format. I'm doing a new format, which is exciting for me. Um, we're going to talk about um, if you're a man, w- how you can get women to be a more attracted to you. What does a woman actually want <laughs> in the masculine? And if you're a woman, I'm sure you're going to be feeling very interested in this conversation because this is something I talk about with all my girlfriends. Like, what are we actually craving? What do we need more of? What kind of reflections will we like? How does it feel to be held by the masculine in today's world? And at the same time, I'm going to do something that is one of my favorite things in the world to do while I make this podcast. I'm going to paint. So... I set up the camera behind me. Let's see if this actually works. Verity's the magical editor in my vortex. Thank you, babe, for helping me on the tech stuff. So I realized that with a lot of my stuff, I'm like, okay, I'm going to sit down and do this thing, and I'm going to do that. And then I'm like, you know what? I just want to vibe with you guys, and I already know what I want to talk about. And when I'm hanging out with my friends, we are painting, we are having a coffee, we are cuddling, and we are fully expressing ourselves so I choose to do that as well like I'm hanging out with you so I've been going on dates recently some of you have asked about is Verde also dating and yeah I had my whole thing with him and his sexual energy and also just my straight up abandonment issues with men and whatever trauma I was working through we have worked through that that is great we're doing great And I'm like encouraging him to go on dates. I'm like excited for him to have pleasure outside of our dynamic. You know, if he wants to, I'm not like, do it, do it. I'm just like, if you want, I want you to know that this is okay. And um, I get that he is very much wanting to protect my heart. And that makes me feel really yummy. So, um, but yeah, it's happening on both sides. And it's exciting. It's exciting to have more reflections. Like for me, my moon is in, or my Venus is in Sagittarius, which is very much about um, playing, playing romantically. I realize I really love the idea of flirting sometimes, the art of seduction, more than needing to be in a romantic dynamic, like needing to even have sex with someone. Like for me, it's more pleasure to enjoy each other sensually sometimes and the emotional intellectual banter that happens like all of the everything around the seduction for me is so juicy (laughs) or it can be so juicy if you're doing it with someone that is fun and exciting and you're clicking with and vibing with um so i have been talking to men that i have been going on dates with just about you know a lot of men when they find out that I host play parties that I have a podcast that I you know I talk about this dynamic between men and women and like how we are shifting in the timeline and who do we want to be and how do we want to show up because I really believe that when we are doing things on an individual level we're all connected into um energetically on a you know a mass consciousness level so everything that we do on an individual level affects the mass consciousness and where the timeline is shifting and which timeline we want to be on because there's endless amounts of parallel realities and we by our choices are every day every second every moment shifting to a timeline that more is in resonance with the vibration that we ourselves are emitting So for instance, if you are in the vibration that the masculine, so if you're a woman and you're heterosexual or bisexual, whatever, if you like men, um, and you're like, I believe that men, my belief and the vibration I said, send out to the world is that the men that are in my life are these like grounded mountains of energy that I can lean on and feel safe to unfold and open up to, and they're very safe in all the ways that I need them to be safe. 
And that doesn't mean they're people pleasers. That doesn't mean they're pushovers. It just means that energetically, f as the feminine, this is the belief that I carry and this is the vibration that I have healed myself into and chosen. So I didn't always have this. I didn't, for most of my timeline, I definitely had a belief deep down that men were not safe because I had a lot of trauma around men growing up. And step by step, I healed and I really faced and went through my trauma. And now this is the vibration that I'm on. And this is why I attract men like Faraday into my life and other amazing, beautiful men. And the vibration that I'm really sending out right now is like that these men are like mountains <laughs> energetically. They're emotionally mature. They're like, you know, they're like taking my beautiful feminine chaos and they're just like, what more do you got? Like, this is nothing. I got you, you know? And of course, I want to talk to them about their emotions. I love hosting people and their emotions, men and women. Men have just as many emotions as women. They're just like culturally programmed to believe that they only have, are allowed to have the emotion of anger, but not too much anger because you might hurt someone, you know? Like, I feel, I feel for the masculine in the collective right now because... So many men that are good men, men that are listening to this podcast, are like, where is my place? Like, I, I don't want to be labeled in any way as a toxic masculine. I see so many men, sexy, gorgeous men come to my play parties that are just frozen because they do not want to make a move on someone in a way that could be portrayed that they are taking up space in a way that's like unsafe or hurtful and so they're just like they literally don't know what to do they're literally like frozen and I need to tell all of you that we need the masculine in our life in a way showing up in a way that the feminine needs so that they can unfold into their 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 power so like we need men to be fully in their power because we need them also because one that's amazing for men to be full in their power. Like, and also, as the femini feminine in the collective, those of us who were born in feminine bodies, who are choosing to step more and more into our power, the world is still run by masculine energy, very dominant, toxic masculine energy. And for big parts of the world, it's still very unsafe for a woman to step into her power. And this might not be physically unsafe, you know, like for most of the Western world, we have moved away from physical violence towards women. But I'm talking like psychological, emotional, like safety. And also physical safety. I mean, that's also in there, right? Um, so I was talking to this one guy I went on a date with the other day. And I just want to, uh, I'll, I'll tell you what he said first, and then I'll tell you a story about our date, because it's funny. Um... He, he was asking me specifically, like, what do you look for? Like, what do you look for in a man? Like, what makes a good man for you? And I was like, hmm, this is a very good question. I love when men are, like, just asking straight up questions like this. And some things that I recognize that, um, that make me feel really good when I'm around masculine energy is for them to be their authentic self, to not be, not be people pleasing. I don't want them to be like a pushover to like do whatever I say. That's not, that's not, I want them to be themselves and be in their power. And also, um, and also to not always agree with me. Like I, 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 I love men that can, me, I can be fully in my power and like, bounce like really intense energy off of and they can stay grounded in their themselves so like they they are grounded and so we're just like imagine you have this energy vortex around you it's like this circle of energy this is actually real this is your aura and when you're in someone else's like when you're when you're together physically with someone, so say you're having a coffee with someone, your auras, your energy bodies are mixing together. They are having their own conversation outside of your intellectual, emotional things, physical things that are happening. And when I'm around a man and I, my aura, my field is filled with very intense emotions about something, it could be about the, the man I'm talking to or just in general about my life, if that man can hold 
their ground, hold their aura of like calm, stable nervous system so that I can just be this, you know, very expressive, passionate, intense Scorpio that I am. And not to get lost in my emotions. They don't need to feel my emotions. I just love it that they are able to keep up with the holding their ground and also witnessing me and being with me in my emotions in the sense of like not emotionally disconnecting from me. This is a very, a very tricky thing to do. This not tricky. This is a very like emotionally complex thing to do. Like you have to be very emotionally mature in order to understand what I'm saying. So I'm going to explain it. I'm try, trying to explain it in a way that is more simple. Um, so for instance, if I'm like really upset that the nature is getting destroyed, you know, I would love it if I talk to a man and they're just like, okay, how does that make you feel? You know, and they go into it. They let, they ask questions so that I can get to the bottom of my own truth. Because when I do that, there's this like, ah. <sighs> so like they can ask, like, yeah, that makes sense that you'd be upset that nature is getting destroyed. What do you think about it? Like, what are, like, how does that make you feel? Let's, let's talk, let's talk more about that. Like, and ask specific questions. Like, so keep the conversation alive. I'm not saying they need to feel anything I'm feeling or to even agree with what I'm saying, but just to allow me to have my process, not tell me what to do, not fix it. I am a fully empowered, sovereign individual uh, that can come to my own solutions. And of course I want reflections, but I usually need to get to my own solutions first and then compare that to any reflections outwardly. If a guy comes and they're telling me what to do before I can find my own truth, I just get really annoyed. I just get more frustrated. I get more emotional because I feel like things are getting put on top of me energetically where without me being able to process what I need to go through and release my own energy. So it's just like more energetic pressure. So any, I just wiped my nose with paint on it. Um, so anyways, if they're able to ask me questions and hold their own ground, like not get not get emotional themselves in that moment. Of course, men are allowed to have their own emotions. I host the men in my life around their emotions all the time. Um, but when I'm in my intense emotional state, for them to be able to hold their ground and hold space for me and allow me to go through. Because then what I, for me, what I usually do is once I'm able to like, yeah, I'm so worried about this, isn't it? And then I just, I finally go back into the knowingness. Like, oh, okay, so my vibration is fear right now that, you know, all the nature on the earth is going to get destroyed or invaded by the neighbors buying the land next to us and talking to us about building, build, like destroying the nature and building bungalows. So what vibration do I want to emit? Because I know that I'm a powerful sovereign being, so my vibration will attract in that 3D reality. Okay, so I choose to have the vibration of absolute safety for myself, for the trees in my backyard, for the nature on this island. <sighs> but you have to go through the process before you can get back into the knowingness. Or you can just shove down your emotions and then have it turn into trauma. You know, that's what most of the world does. I'm not, I'm not about that life. So this guy was asking about this. And then also, like, for instance, if I'm on a date with someone... What I love is for a man to handle my 3D reality so that I can just be, so that I can just be, so that I can be in my emotions, so I can be in my body, so I can <sighs> just unfold more and more because that fucking turns me on. Um, and to give me like really specific compliments about like seeing me in ways that are not necessarily just my physical appearance. Like I know I'm beautiful. I have a very healthy self love and I don't necessarily desire, like it's, it's nice to hear you're beautiful, but for me that doesn't like, that doesn't turn me on. That doesn't like reach my heart. Like I guess for me at least what reaches my heart. And I think this is for most women is like, yeah, well, of course we want to be told we're beautiful. But what really opens us up is if a man listens to what we say and then gives specific compliments on appreciating who we are as an individual. 
So like, I'll give an example. This guy and I were talking and I was telling him about the community, the uh, impact that I do and how much I really like, I really believe this is my earth mission is to have this, I call it now the now earth community. It's not new. It's not far away. It's happening now um, where we are all, you know, we're all together. We live within walking distance of each other. We grow our own food. Our kids grow up together. Our dogs are all running freely. There's some sort of water nearby because I need that in my life. And it just feels like we are in it together. You know, we each have our individual missions, but we're together collectively on the mission of having our tribe and, you know, having this vibration of home, earth home, community, tribe. And that's, that, that I know that it is my work, you know, is help people feel like they belong being in tribe. And he said to me, he said, I really feel that you are wholesome. There's like a purity of the way that you are saying this. And I know that you're going to do this. I know this is like, you're going to accomplish this. And I was just like, Ooh, Ooh, that feels really yummy in my body. Like, thank you for like, I know it, but also thank you for reflecting it. And you know, like for me, that like turns me on. Like I'm like, Ooh, and I even got like a little, like, I literally felt like a little like, ooh, like I might, like my eyelashes started fluttering and I was just like, what the fuck am I doing? And then I was like, oh, this is flirting. Like, this is the kind of flirting that I like, you know? And he was asking more specifics like, okay, well, is there anything that I could have done, you know, that, w- you know, within our date, like we sat and talked for an hour and a half at a coffee shop and he was like, is there anything that... um that you would have liked more of in our date? I love, I love these kind of questions. That also is really turning me on. And I I thought about it and I said, you know, when I came in, I was running errands around Tongsala, which is like our town, like our main, (laughs) it's so funny. It's like, we don't really have a main town, but it's like our little city here. Anyway, so I was running errands there and it was in the middle of the day and it's in the very hot season right now. And so I said to him, I was like, he had been at the cafe already, like working on his laptop. And I said, you know, you invited me here. I got here. I was really hot and sweaty. And then uh, I would have loved no expectation, but you asked (laughs) and I didn't and I was okay with it. But what I would have loved is to have me show up and all sweaty and needing and you just to be like, you sit down, you get settled. What what kind of drink do you want? What coffee do you want? it's not about the money. It's not about buying me something. It's about handling the 3d reality around me. So I can uh, just melt into my feminine more and be more open and receptive. If I have to handle all the 3d reality, me all the reality around me all the time and also vibe with you and also, you know, take care of, it's like, I don't have any space to, to be in the beingness and this beingness, the state of, Ah, it's really like, I just keep sighing because that's what it is. It's like when you sigh, it's actually your nervous system saying that you're fully safe and you have arrived and there's nowhere to go. Like you're good. It's like a, when you sigh and you can also just a little random tip is that you can sigh throughout your day to remind your nervous system that you are safe. So you can also reverse engineer this, which I highly recommend. (sighs) <sighs> so um, it was just funny because I could tell that he was a little embarrassed that he hadn't done that because it was like kind of an obvious thing. Um, but then I think like, you know, maybe it's not. So in the culture that I grew up with in California, like, yeah, you just handle shit. Like I, most of my adult life, I lived in New York City and like men, there are pretty like they're, they're like healthily in their masculine, in my opinion. Like they're just like, yeah, like we, if I take you out, like I handle, I handle things for you. I even had a boyfriend back then that didn't have as much money as me. Like I made more money than him. And when we went out, I would give him the money for dinner or for drinks that we were going to because I just didn't want to handle it. It wasn't about who was paying for what. It was just that I literally just wanted to relax and not have to deal with it. So, but I've noticed that, you know, in some cultures, like for instance, in German culture, there, I've been talking to some friends because, you know, I'm dating Ferdy, who's a German. And um, 
some of his German friends that are now my friends, uh, they have said that, like, yeah, a lot of women in Germany, they actually take offense if you try and buy them dinner. And I was like, come again? Like, <laughs> if someone's trying to buy me something, and I'm always like, thank you. That was great. Like, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Unless I can tell energetically they're thinking that buying me dinner equals they get a fuck me, which fuck them then and not in not in the way that they want. I just mean like fuck off. Um, but they were my friend was explaining to me that this is like coming from um, women just really wanting to make sure they're in their power and like kind of proving that they could take care of themselves. And I was like, OK, I get that. Like I grew up in an environment where my dad controlled all of the money in a way that was not empowering and even when my mom wanted to get her own job like we had uh wanted to get her own job he would like make her give him her paychecks and still control her through the money it was really fucked up so i think subconsciously for me i like went out in the world and was like i'm gonna make my own money and now I'm coming back into the big artist that is inside of me, but I used to write a lot of poetry, I used to sing, I used to play drums, I used to be very artistic, and I used to make clothes with my mom. And then when I grew up, I was like, okay, I need to go work in a law firm, I need to study law, I need to, I need to be this very serious person <laughs> so, that I can, so that I can protect myself, so that I can create safety for myself because... In my reality, the men that were in their masculine, like my father, were not creating, they were creating physical safety, but it was equaled like, I control you. You don't have any power. Like, you, were, you have to give up your empowerment. And that was just never okay for me. So, so I feel like this might be, like, I had a very extreme version of this growing up, but I feel like this might be, like, on a collective level, how a lot of women feel, like... They, we went from, you know, thousands and thousands of years of disempowerment of women and them being treated literally like cattle and like slaves and whatever, not human, um, to women feeling like, okay, I want to be able to take care of myself completely in a man's world. So that means a lot of them have gone fully into their masculine of like, I can do the men, stuff for men and women. I mean, I can take care of myself. And I just want to put it in there that there is some people who have messaged me and said, I don't like it when you talk about, you know, the, a man has to do this and a woman has to do this. I'm very gender fluid. And I'm here to tell you that I fully support whatever feels good for you in your body. If you're a woman and you resonate more with masculine energy, do whatever feels great for you. One of my closest friends, shout out to you, Marisa, she is... Uh, married to a woman and she is a judge in Berlin and she is the main breadwinner in her family like within her dynamic and I just fucking love that I love that she's like this is the energy that I want to express and also there is a huge amount of the collective that are you know heteronormative I'll say and they're just like really lost right now and like trying to figure shit out and I'm like here to help y'all so that's like I just want to put a little shout out there that I in my own journey you know when I left my religion I left my family and I went and like started my own journey I also was very much like fuck it I can do everything I can do it everything and you know what I did everything I traveled to over 60 countries I worked in law for six years I like put myself through law school at night while I worked at Starbucks during the day and like hid it from my religion because I wasn't allowed to go to university in my my cult like so much bullshit I started a travel company with some people and traveled all around the world I consulted co-working and co-living spaces to launch I did large um, I did business consulting for large corporations all over Asia and like fly and like <laughs> run a conference for like 200 employees of like Coca-Cola. And then there's, it's like, you know, I did all the things business wise. And then I just realized, oh my God, I'm so fucking tired. Like I'm so energetically tired 
because I, well, one, I wasn't doing things that I actually loved. So if all of those things were my highest excitement, great. That's amazing. They weren't. (laughs) They were me thinking that I needed to make money to support myself and not just make money. Everyone, like you make money to support yourself. I mean, like thinking I needed to make money in a very masculine way of like, how much money can I make? It's all about me. But it was like the survival. Like it wasn't even me wanting to, um, it wasn't like egotistical. It was just like straight up, like I needed to prove to myself that I could take care of myself because also I didn't have my family to fall back on. My family does not speak to me. They act like I'm dead. So, you know, all y'all who are coming out here to Copanyong every winter and having a great time, and some of you have, like, family that you live with and you go back to until you figure your life out, I have none of that. So I, yeah, it felt like this amazing race of Brittany in survival mode. And so I definitely understand what that's like to really prove to yourself that you can do it on your own because I did that in a way where I had no other choice. And then what I realized was I don't actually love that lifestyle because I didn't have any space to really feel myself. Um, So then that's when I was on Copanyong and I started to really go in through my spiritual process. I've always been very spiritual awake, but um, I was playing this game for a while of like proving to myself that I could make it. And, and I did, and I, I proved to myself, and great, soul, my soul learned this lesson. And now I'm done with that. And so then I started my community space here on the island, and my mission was for this new now Earth tribe and community and us all living together and being these beacons of light for the whole world that y'all are not alone at all. We are all in this together. We are all figuring it out and it's happening. Like the world is shifting and the more of us that stay in our power and do not get overwhelmed by all the sadness and all the negativity. Like right now we have this huge shift coming up in the beginning of April where, um, there is just this opportunity for us to step more into our light um, or choose to step more into our fear. And I choose, I choose love and light in a very grounded way, you know? Like, if you know me personally, you know that I am straight up the most grounded person ever to the point where this is, what I'm, this is the point I'm saying. I have been so grounded for most of my life when I'm in reality, I'm just this fucking flowy mermaid fairy that just wants to paint all day and be naked and dance. And, um, and I'm like starting to sing again and paint more. And just like this artistic side of me is coming back around. I'm starting to design clothes again. And I just feel like this is... It just feels so yummy in my body. And it's so amazing to be in a partnership with a man where he fully supports this. He creates space for this. He's walking in the door right now. He holds space for my 3D reality in a lot of different ways so that I can pursue these things. Um, And I'm really grateful for that. And I... I feel like if us women were allowing ourselves to have this more from the masculine in ways that we felt safe, then we would be able to just feel better in our bodies. (laughs) I say that in like a really um, kind of a joking way because I'm like, isn't this the point of what we're all trying to do here in life? And then we get in our heads and our physical minds take over and we freak out. I think I like went on a little tangent there. So I'm coming back to my notes. Um, so something is like when a man takes care of our 3D reality oh okay one thing I want to say to men too is we're not asking you I feel I've I've noticed this because I've talked to a lot of men when you host play parties you, you end up hearing a lot of this stuff like people's dynamics like how they view themselves in the timeline, their connection with their partners. And what I've noticed with a lot of men is like, there's also this frozenness of 
when they do wake up to the injustice of like how the timeline has been for women, kind of feeling like overwhelmed and a little bit of shame to be a man in the timeline. Like overwhelmed because they feel like they want to fix it. Like Faraday's like this. He's like, I just want to fix, I just want to, why is it like this? Like this is not okay for women to be treated this way. It's not okay for them to feel unsafe and like what the fuck is up with these men? And like he wants to create this wolf pack to like, you know, protect the women on the island. And what I will say to you is that you don't need, so if you're a man listening to this and you feel this way, like you're like a little bit like, what the fuck do I do? Because it's just very overwhelming. You don't need to take care of all of the women in the world. It's not possible. All you need to do is take care of the women in your life that you already love. Your mom, your sister, your partner, your girlfriends. And just take up space in their life in a way that feels yummy for them and their bodies. So you can even ask them, or if you're a woman, you can ask the men in your life to take up space because they might want to be in your life more, but they're just not sure what you actually need. So I'll give you an example. I have been messaging my guy friends and just sending them like really lovely voice messages where I'm like, I just really honor and appreciate having you in my life. And I realized I had this epiphany because I was talking to a lot of men about this. And I was like, I just realized that a lot of men don't know like how best to show up for us as women. Like as, and as your friend, I, I view you as like one of my soul family. These are for my closer guy friends. And I would just love it if you wanted to check in on me more. Like just ask me randomly, how are you doing? How are you feeling? Um, ask me if I want to go out on a, a coffee day or friend day. And this would make me feel really good in my body, really yummy. And also if there's anything that you need or if there's any way that I can show up for you more as a friend, um, let me know. I'm here. And the responses, oh my gosh, have been so nourishing for everyone involved. Like I had one of my guy friends say like, wow, I really... I really was frozen. I didn't know how to show up and I, and I have been overwhelmed by taking care of my own life. And I just thought that if I showed up for you, I needed to show up like all the way. And I was like, no, I'm good. I have like, I have Faraday as my partner. I have other friends, but if we all just like checked in with each other more, that would make me feel really good. And he was like, I can do that. And he has been doing it. He's been checking in like a couple times a week and just, asking me how I'm feeling. We send each other uh, voice messages, just checking, like catching up just on what's going on with us in the week. And because we're doing this, we end up hanging out more. We end up just feeling more nourished by the connection because we're creating more opportunities for connection and more opportunities for us to show up. Um, and yeah, I just I just find it to be like, why are we not doing this, you know? And it's because men men don't know. They don't want to take up negative space. They don't want to take up space in your life as a woman and for, for you to feel like overwhelmed, controlled, any sort of unsafe, anything negative. And then us women were like, where are the good men, you know? And it's like, they're there. They just don't know what they're supposed to be doing. <laughs> so if you can tell them, hey, this would make me feel really good if you did this. Like, I really appreciate our connection. I think you're an amazing masculine in the timeline. And I just want to honor you. And also, I want to connect more. And this is how it would feel good for me. Um, and then what I'll say is that Oh, and so what I wanted to say first, I wanted to say to, to, to the men is like, you don't need to take care of, yeah, you don't need to take care of the whole world. Just take care of your bubble. And if all the men did this in the world, all of the women in the world would end up feeling nourished because there's enough men to go around with all the women, right? So um, there's so much for the masculine to do in a positive way that would affect the timeline. And it's, this is like really like the 3D reality. Like I have men where, um, you know, if Faraday is busy or something and I need help like moving something or doing something, I just message them and they're like, yep, I'll be over in five minutes. And oh my God, it's so nice to have these people and these amazing friends in the mask. And of course I have all my girlfriends, but I'm speaking to the men right now. 
It's so, so nice to have you uh, like in our lives and it means so much to us. And like you matter, like we really, really appreciate you. Not just because you can move things around. I also just, what I'm saying is it's like the masculine energy when it's held, holding space for the feminine is so nourishing. It feels so, so yummy in our bodies. And it makes me feel more empowered to go and do all the things that I'm excited to do in my life because I feel like, I feel like you know, my brothers have my back. Like uh, when we got attacked last fall, like I, <laughs> I had to like hold some of them back from like going and finding this person and retaliating. And they have very strong connections on this island. Uh, and so it was like, <laughs> in a one way, it was really beautiful. Because I was like, wow, my tribe is really here. And another way, I'm like, please don't kill someone. Please don't kill anyone. We don't need more violence. We're trying to move away from violence. But it's just also n nice to know that me going through something evokes that strong of a uh, reaction out of the men in my life that love me. And um, for the women, if you are asking this of the men in your life, I really invite you to, um, to appreciate them. Appreciate everything that they do. Appreciate, like when they do show up, like, wow, this really means a lot to me. Or when they do check in, wow, I just want you to know this really makes me feel good in my body. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. I see you. I think you're amazing. Like, this is what them this is what men need like they need to know that they are valued especially when all of us women are so in our power and we are you know we are able to do most of almost all the same things that men can do the, a lot of them are like why did they even need me they're better than us <laughs> and it's like we are all equal we are all equally needed we're all different beautiful pieces of the puzzle that is this <laughs> Picasso of a timeline um, so yeah uh, I'm going to look at my notes I get such on these like channeling rampages that I forget what I was saying um, so another thing with this is um you know, say you're the feminine and you're, you know, you're going on dates with men and you're around masculine energy that is not showing up for you in a way that is nourishing for you and that isn't actually getting it. I mean, I would, I would invite you to speak up and like let them know what, what feels better in your body uh, so they have the opportunity to shift. Um, but, you know, if they choose not to, they choose not to. There's still a huge portion of men that are they like the way the timeline is going in the past when it comes to men being in power. If you saw the Barbie movie, you'd see how Ken was just like, um, we want men to stay in power. Everything's great for us when we're in power because, you know, whatever. And that's fine. But like for the women, like it is not your job to be their therapist, to be their mother, to try and get them to change if they are choosing that timeline, you need to make sure that you value your worth. You need to make sure that you value who you are and what you are, what you're all about. Like, what, what do you want? What are you calling in? What are you choosing? What vibration are you setting off, sending off into the universe? Some people are like, well, I attracted this man in for a reason. It must be something cosmically. Bitch, that could be that cosmically you need to reaffirm what your value is in the timeline. I've had so many. I mean, for me, especially because I host play parties, I get so many men of all different sorts coming into my vortex. And it is not, I do not ask myself, why in the universe did this person? I ask myself, does this person see my value? Does this person, is this a safe man that I can have in my community? Do I actually want this person around? Do they get it? Do I not have to teach them anything? Like, of course, we're always up leveling each other back and forth on different reflections. But like, there's a foundational standard that I have of like, who I will choose to allow into my vortex as a man in the timeline. And of course, for women also, but right now we're talking about the masculine feminine dynamic. So, I really, I really invite you to, for whatever standards you have, 
like for me, like this is something that's interesting is I'm recognizing that my standards have risen like since the last time I was dating, um, like before Faraday and I got together, like we were going through a lot of stuff with our openness. And so our dating was ended up being just kind of like whoever was coming into our vortex. But right now I'm officially like going on dates <laughs> with people that I don't know at all. Not like people who are just like in my community that I've met synchronistically. I mean, I also, th- I, l- I think I love that even more like the synchronistic because, um, you know, you kind of know each other. There's some vetting that's already been done of like who you are and the vibrational match is already kind of there. Cause if you're, attracted to the same vibration of people in a community then yeah you know what I mean um and I just noticed that since the last time I was dating like in this way where I'm like literally on a dating app and met someone on Bumble and then I went for coffee um yeah I mean my standards have risen like if if the person does not realize that it is a fucking privilege to spend time in my energy and they don't understand that they should just get up and go get me a coffee because I've just been running around and I went out of my way to meet them it's already a hard no like I found it interesting with this guy to like have a conversation and also just because I was really hot and I'd already <laughs> went down and ordered a coffee. But I was just like, yeah, this is not going anywhere, dude. You already failed. Um, and that's hard for men to, because like, you know, a lot of men are like, well, how am I supposed to know? And this is what I'm telling you. Listen to this podcast. Send this to men in your life. Because this stuff is pretty standard. And okay, if you're, if you're, in, if you're in an environment and a culture where you're like, I'm a woman, I can pay for my own and I don't need them to buy me a coffee. That's great. I'm happy for you. But I'll tell you that if someone just out of generosity, out of just wanting to make sure that you can just rest and sit down and they want to, they want to please you because they value who you are, not because they're trying to get anything out of you, just because you're just like this divine feminine essence of a creature. And you're just like, just by sharing this essence with them for an hour they're just so in awe that they're like, what can I offer you? That's my standard. So you choose whatever is vibing with you. Um, uh, Something, the last thing I want to say about this is when I went to Samui recently with Faraday, it was such an interesting point because, or like realization, moment of awakening for me, because um, in our everyday life here on Copenhagen, Freddy and I have gotten in our flow of like the household things, like what we take care of. Like I pay for these things, he pays for that thing. And, you know, we just, we have worked it out in a way that is balancing for both of us. And we both feel really yummy about. And when I went to Samui, this is like, you know, a new, inv- it's just the island next door to us, the next island over. But it was interesting because, you know, I don't really like Samui that super much. It's like a Copenhagen. <laughs> My friend said, Samui is like Copenhagen, but like broken. Like they've destroyed a lot of the nature there. And it's just a lot of concrete. And it's really hot because there's not that many trees around. And that's about it. That's Samui. I mean, it has amazing villas, but like no one wants to live there because there's no community because they killed the nature. So anyways, I had to go there for um, a procedure at a clinic um, to get my IUD, my birth control replaced. And what I noticed was I had already asked for it. I was like, you know, this is going to be a procedure where I'm I'm having a hard time here, you know, and I mean, I'm going to be in pain. I already know this because I've had the procedure before and I would just, I'm just giving you a heads up that this is going to happen and I would really love it if I could get some extra support of, of like handling the 3D things. And he was like, yeah, of course, like tell me what you need or like just let me know and I handle it. And then I realized that I literally at some points was running ahead of him physically and handling things even after I told him this. Even after I asked for support, my 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 reaction was to still handle everything in the 3D. Like, I booked our villa. When we got to the pier, like, he parked the bike. He drove us there, and I unparked the bike, and I was already, like, jumping off to go get our tickets. I mean, I was worried we were going to miss our boat because we were a little bit late. Um, 
but you know and then we were we got to the after we got our tickets we got to the pier and he's like vlogging and I could have just and I'm like are you looking for our boat I'm looking for our boat like this is all like me being in my masculine and then we get to Samui and um we get to the the villa and it's like really hot. We had like driven on a scooter for like 20 minutes in the middle of the sun and it was very, very hot that day. So we're both melting. And we get there and like, I immediately get off the bike and like go to the front desk to check in. And Faraday's like, okay, if she wants, like he's just, I mean, on the one hand, he's not stepping in to help me. He would probably say if he was in this conversation right now, yes, and when I do step in to help you, sometimes you, you know, bite my head off because you want to handle it. So anyway, this is a realization for me, not for Verdi, um, that I had asked him to handle things physically so that I can be more in my feminine and be more flowy and just receive because I knew I was going through this operation and also because it feels good to like not have to handle everything. And I was still doing everything. And then when we got to our villa, they forgot to clean it and I just had a meltdown. I was just like really upset, really overheated, really hungry. And I didn't even really want to be on smoothie. I was going to go get the operation later that day. So I was already stressed out because I knew it was going to be painful. And, and then I was just like, why didn't you help me? Why didn't you help me do more things? Why didn't you step in? Why were you just vlogging all the time on the side? And he was like, why didn't you just slow down long enough to allow me to help you or to help us? You literally were like physically running to the next thing. And I'm like, I'm just doing it because I want to get it done and I want to make sure we get that to the place that we need. And he's just like, or you could just sit down and have a coconut and let me do it. And I was like, ah, fuck, you're right. Okay. And then he was just like, why don't you lay in the AC, take a shower, lay down, go in the pool. I'll go get us some food. He went and got us like some yummy vegan food at our favorite place in Samui. And um, I watched a movie. I like, you know, settled down my nervous system. And then I said to myself, I was like, okay, we're here till tomorrow. Like, I'm just going to let him handle things. I'm not going to, like, like when we get to a new place, when we need to do something, I'm going to, like, I already asked Verde. He already said he can handle things. I'm just going to do it. Because I think there's two things. There's, like, one, you know, I've lived in Thailand longer than him. I've lived here for, like, eight years, and he's lived here for two or three. Um, so there's just, like, I know, t- I know more Thai than him. I... I like I just know how things work here more. But that's really an excuse. Like he can handle things just as good as me. He's very, very efficient. He's Mr. Virgo over there. Um and I feel like the real thing is that when you are a woman who hasn't had to you haven't had I guess I just have this imprint from childhood of having to do everything on my own in my early 20s, having to do everything on my own, even though I was in many long-term relationships in my 20s. I still felt this brunt of like, this weight of like, I still have to make my own money. I still need to handle things on my, I still need to like survive because if I break up with this person, I don't have anything to fall back on. So there wasn't like this softening of we can do this together because I didn't trust most of them to be able to handle 3D reality as good as I could. Like, I actually am very good at this and I'm not saying that to like be stuck up. I just mean I had to figure it out. I didn't have a choice. So I am very good at handling things in 3D reality. If you ask Ferdy, he will say that I'm very chaotic and, you know, very flowy and can be very messy. But I will tell you that when when shit needs to get it done, like Brittany can get it done, especially in foreign countries. And, um, and w- also what that means is like Faraday is actually better at handling 3d reality than me for most things. And that's really refreshing to have that in a partner because then I don't have to do everything on my own. So the rest of the trip, I really just <sighs> took a deep breath 
lots of deep breaths <laughs> and allowed myself to receive, allow myself to appreciate him, you know, getting the tickets, driving us to the pier, um, like handling everything around the operation physically that I need help with, getting me snacks at 7-Eleven to surprise me, which really were super nice because I needed that later. Um, and just emotionally being my rock when I was going through the procedure because it was way more painful than I remembered. And um, yeah, just like, yeah, he definitely was my mountain for that, for that experience. And I really, really appreciate him for that. And, um, and I feel that there is like, there is just a lot of truth in that story for me about how much men in my life over my timeline have actually really wanted to take up space in a healthy way. And I wasn't trusting that. I wasn't trusting like, what do they want back? Or, you know, do they want to take my power away? And just like, just straight up not trusting it as a safe thing to receive. And a lot of that was my own healing that needed to happen in order to have the vibration and hold the reality that it was safe. Like I had to prove that to myself. And also because I feel like I was abused for most of my life. I feel like I was holding this vibration of abuse. And so I was attracting in men in my life that there was probably something a little unsafe about them. One was a little violent. Another one was a hothead. Like, yeah, there was like this, this kind of, yeah, there was, there, there was truth to that as well. But it was because I had the vibration first that men weren't trustworthy and then I was attracting in men that were, for the most part, good men. But in, in the end, they actually weren't, you know. Um, it's just interesting. Um, it's a very flowy way to explain all of that. I love it because I'm also painting at the same time. I feel like you understand. I hope you understand. I actually ha was going to, like, read more questions <laughs> from readers, from listeners. And it's already like an hour in and I think I'm just going to do another one tomorrow and paint some more because this was really fun for me to paint and make a podcast. And yeah, I just love like trying new things and having it be fun and flowy. And if you can see, I also was recommended to paint with my fingers because apparently this is like somatically like in our nervous system, really nice to like connect to the vibration of the colors and paint and everything oh my the camera turned off so I want to show you this is my painting so if you are watching visually you can see and I painted over oh, I painted over something else that I had painted before because I also find that really fun to have like textures of just like layers of things anyways hope you guys have an amazing day and let me know if any of this lands for you or if there's any deep truths or if you have more questions. I love talking about relationship stuff. I'm going to talk more about this a lot more in upcoming podcasts. And if you have any funny stories you want to share, any questions, like I'm always down to... Sometimes I like to share them in the podcast if you're up for it uh, anonymously. Um, oh, la, la, words. This is why I need to stop because my words are not working anymore. Anonymously, of course. Okay. It's Brittany Bond signing off. Hope you all have an amazing day. Bye.